Hey everybody, it's your buddy's pal Anthony, and I want to talk with you guys today about two movies actually, and they couldn't be further apart from one another. I want to talk Shazam, Fury of the Gods, and the Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, I saw them both. Shazam I saw a little while ago. I've been sitting on this because I've just been thinking about it. And Super Mario Brothers I saw just recently with some of my nieces, and I wanted to talk about it while it was while this one was still fresh. So, without further ado, Steve, roll that intro, please. All right, so before we get into either review, don't forget, links down below, hit the shop, join the Nerd Affiliated Army, get yourself some sweet, sweet merch. I was pleasantly surprised to find some stickers from the boss in the mail this week, and uh, thank you for that, boss. And yeah, all sorts of other cool stuff, iPod cases, clothes, uh, stickers, like I just said, we, we have a lot and we're adding more all the time. So go there, pick up some stuff, and please... Don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, enough of that. Anyway, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. I am looking right now at Rotten Tomatoes. I know, I know, but it's all I have for a wider audience at the moment. And the tomato meter reads 49% and the audience score reads 86. Compare that to also on Rotten Tomatoes. The original Shazam got a 90 on the tomato meter and an 82 on the audience score. So... I don't know about you guys, I was pleasantly surprised by Shazam. It was in the middle of, you know, I think it came out after Justice League, uh, definitely, you know, definitely post Batman versus Superman and Suicide Squad and all like the, oh my God, what's going on here? What's happening? So Shazam was originally very unexpected hit to me. I think I, I think I speak for the rest of, for Sal and Steve on that one. I wasn't really expecting much, but it was fun. It was enjoyable. And, you know, like, not that I saw it with the family. But it's a good family superhero movie. You know, it's not overly dark. It's not too serious. It it, it struck a balance with me. And uh, also it had, I didn't envy it because it was coming out right before Avengers Endgame. So, you know, no movies really stood a chance then. But this one, for what it was, for the mess that the DC Universe is and was at that time, I think Shazam was a very uh, a sleeper hit, I'd say. So now that brings us to Shazam Fury of the Gods. DC is still a friggin' mess. And where does it fit into the overall universe? Who's Batman? Who's Superman? The last time we saw Superman, but he didn't have a head because they couldn't, because WB wouldn't let uh, Cavill show up. They didn't want that to happen, as you've probably seen Zachary Le Levi, the uh, Shazam, has been posting in the wake of the movie. He was posting a couple things, and he mentions that. He mentions, he mentions a whole bunch of other stuff. So go listen to him if you're curious. I won't uh, try to summarize here even though that's the entire thing I'm trying to do with these movies. Hmm. Whatever. So the sequel picks up. Uh, you've seen it in the trailer. In his Shazam form, Billy Batson is at, a, is at a doctor's office, basically venting his life's issues. The doctor's a little shocked, saying, you know, I'm a, I'm a pediatrician. I'm not a shrink. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The, uh, the rest of the Shazam family, except for Freddie Freeman, they don't really seem into it. But even Freddie, he's kind of interested in going out and doing things on his own a little bit, not in a rebellious way necessarily, just, uh, you know, he wants to do his own thing. He has the powers. He's not walking with a cane. He's trying to be, he's, he's the superhero nerd and he's probably what we'd all be like if we actually got the power. So that was, that was fine. But Billy Batson, he has this whole, it's, it's all or none rule. And you can start to find out that it's because, well, he's about to age out of the foster program and, you know, he's really happy with this family and he does he wants to keep the family together. He wants to do everything as a family, especially the one thing that only the family can do become superheroes. They have a terrible outing at the start of the movie. There, there's a disaster on a bridge. They go to save it. And, uh, you know, Freddie Freeman's trying to save the cute girls at first. And uh, I, I'm sorry, I forget all their names, but uh, the youngest one who turned Violet, I want to say, the one in the purple suit, she saves a box of kittens at first, and then that's when Freddie shows up to save the girls, because she's, you know, a kid, she's just like, oh my god, the cats. 
Uh, and but like I said, they have a terrible outing. They're actually called the Philly Fiascos in in the movie as like a derogatory name, and that's the running one of the running jokes throughout the whole film. But um, then that happens, and you get the idea that everybody's kind of tired of Billy. He's trying to hold on way too tight, and it's you know having the opposite effect like it always does. It's just pushing them away. Mary wants to go off to college, but she didn't go off to college at first. Uh, you get the impression because Billy talked her out of it somehow. And, uh, yeah, so there's, so there's some family tension and then enter Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu as the daughters of Atlas. They take the staff that Shazam broke in the first movie, which by the way, during the flashback to the first movie where he gives the rest of the family the powers and then snaps the shit, the, uh, the staff, they change the Mary Marvel actress. They're actually all wearing the same costumes that they're wearing in the sequel, instead of wearing the costumes that they had in the original. And it was a little, it's, I'm sure nobody else really paid attention to it, but it was a thing. And then I saw it explained online. The director had said, well, you know, this was supposed to come out post Flashpoint. So basically they he, they were going to retcon the whole thing. And the Mary Marvel actress always played the adult Mary Marvel. And they always had those costumes, I guess, which is weird. I would not I would have thought just, just saving some time and money to go back and use the stock footage or whatever you call it from the first film. But nope, they reshot that whole thing for a second just to show him snapping the staff. Anyway, Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu, they're the daughters of Atlas. They find the broken staff at a museum. You find out that uh, when he broke the staff, he also broke uh, a spell that had been cast that trapped them in their dimension, which is where the wizard Shazam is, by the way, still alive and also imprisoned by them. You find out they were trapped there when the wizards stole the powers of the gods to give to you know the champion. They've been in prison this whole time. Their realm has died. They want the staff. They want the powers of their father back. They want to uh, resurrect their kingdom. Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu are insane. It's great. It's cool to see them in roles like this. Uh, I'm reading an article where it said, you know, because they're gods and they're timeless, we were able to just cast the best actors. You know, they didn't have to, oh, we need somebody young who can do the fights and everything else. They can just cast whoever and let the stunt team and CGI do its work. And by the way, it's a, common compliment to that I give out. But this movie looked good. It did. It wasn't like I'm not noticing. I've seen the Flash trailer. If you guys have, we're getting, there's a scene, uh, a clip I've seen where uh, they freeze frame on Batfleck and it's kind of giving vibes of Superman when they have that terrible mustache CGI'd out. So to say that a DC film looks good, I think is a little bit of high praise. Anyway, continuing on, the goddesses go to Philly, they want their power, like I said, they want their father's powers back. And very quickly, they do things which I think were smart because they do things to isolate Philly from the rest of the, of the world, the rest of the DC world. This way, you say to yourself during the film, well, why isn't Superman busting down the bubble? Where's Wonder Woman? Where's Cyborg? Where's everybody, right? Well, they can't get in. They can't get in. Nobody can get out. And it's a very good, you know, maybe it's lazy writing. I thought it worked just to keep it as a self-contained story. Something else they do, which I was very surprised by, they actually, very quickly, the rest of the family, except for Billy Batson, they, they're they able to get the powers from them. So it's very quickly back to uh, Zachary Levi and a bunch of child actors throughout the film, except for Mary Marvel, who's her adult self at all times now. And somehow she's not recognized because I guess she wears her hair different. If a pair of sunglasses works for Clark Kent, I guess it's whatever. And then we have some unlikely team-ups. Freddy gets uh, kidnapped, one of the daughters of Atlas, a third daughter, who I forget the actress's name. She's actually undercover in the school because some reason. She was, she knew that uh, Shazam showed up there, so she was trying to find out that, you know information on him. She wants to steal the powers, and then Freddy reveals himself to her, and then that you know all clicks into place. But naturally, she's conflicted because... She just is. They have to have somebody who has a soft spot, I guess. So Freddy loses his powers. All the other kids lose their powers in turn. I'm starting to jump around at this point, by the way. Freddy gets taken hostage and actually has an unlikely team up with him and the wizard Shazam, which is actually pretty funny. Like, I wouldn't have thought that I needed to see the two of them as a comedy duo, but it worked and it broke the tension. And I don't know if you haven't caught on at this point, this movie is lighthearted. It's not super serious. And I'm echoing something that Zachary Levi said, he goes, Oh, you know, it's a shame. I'm paraphrasing. Also, it's like, it's a shame that, you know, 
all superhero movies, people think it has to be dark and brooding and this and that. And he's right. Like that has a place for everything. One of the gripes I have with Batman versus Superman is it shouldn't have had Superman in the title. It should have been Batman, a Batman movie, Batman reacting to the events of Man of Steel. And that gives it a pass for it being so dark and so brutal because you're seeing it through Batman's lens. A Superman movie is supposed to be uplifting and hopeful. And Steve's going to cut me off for this again. I think Man of Steel was a good Superman movie for a modern telling, but I won't get into that argument again. But I'm just saying, I think Zachary Levi made a point. And this movie, it is still an enjoyable superhero film, and it doesn't have all the dark and brooding. You know, it's actually, I think, some of it's at night, but it's never like he's in a corner sulking or, you know, he doesn't uh, do a reverse Black Adam and scorch his suit to show that he's, uh, to turn it black, to show that he's grown up and more mature or anything like that. You know, it's a there. There is a journey. He gets to be a little bit more advanced by the end of it in terms of his mentality, not necessarily his powers. And uh, yeah, it's just it was a good film. It was good. It was enjoyable. And like I said before, it's sitting currently at a eighty six percent audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's that's more than fair. I think it should be a little bit higher. I don't think it should have gotten the hate that it's been getting. And unfortunately, you know, like Steve says, cinemas are dying. What are you going to do? But I digress, as you might expect. Back to the action. There's some good action scenes where Shazam and Mary Marvel and Purple Marvel, I can't remember her character's name, I'm sorry, versus Helen Mirren. Lucy Liu is, uh, you find out, the true villain of the movie because all that time imprisoned in their realm that was dying, she's decided she wants vengeance on the mortal realm. And whereas ultimately find out that um, Helen Mirren and the other daughter, whose name I forget, wanted to, there was this apple who, uh, if you ate it, you get the power of the gods, but if you plant it in a god realm, it'll restore life and whatnot. Helen Mirren wants to take the apple back and plant it so that their realm can live again. Lucy Liu's like, nah, fuck humans. She wants to plant it in, uh, the, in Earth and destroy it and rule over humanity like that. And, you know, there's a, not, and of course now, there's infighting between the uh, supposed villains of the movie and, you know, Helen Mirren's goals are maybe a little bit more altruistic, I guess, and where, where she just wanted back what was theirs and then she was going to take this apple and go and rebuild her realm and maybe they would have come to screw with humanity again, maybe not. But in the immediacy, there wouldn't have been a problem if you find out they just went along with Helen Mirren, but Lucy Liu has other plans. She wants vengeance. So there's your dark twist, I guess. So... They turn on each other. She steals the youngest daughter of Atlas's powers. She actually used that you think she kills Helen Mirren. And then she goes on the war path. She's riding a wooden dragon, which was a weird choice. And Shazam even mentions that in the film. Like, wow, you're a dragon. That's really cool. But you're made out of wood and you shoot fire. Hmm. So cool fight scene all throughout Philly. The rest of the depowered kids, they get involved in the action, which was a little bit eye rolly, but you know, it is aimed at a younger audience, so whatever. Uh, and the Wizard Shazam is still running around doing his thing. And uh, they also, by the way, at a certain point, they bring the foster parents in on this. They finally find out. I thought they knew after the first movie, but I guess I have to watch it again. I thought they knew after the first film that their kids were the superheroes. And throughout the entire movie, like they're kind of, the father's kind of putting it together. Like, wait a minute, they just disappeared. And they're talking about the Philly fiascos on TV. And then they all show up again and whatever. By the end of the film, they finally find out. So Billy's the only one left with his powers. He's going after Lucy Liu. He, they, you know, they devise a plan and ultimately he gets Helen Mirren to shrink the bubble that's been containing Philadelphia. He gets her to shrink the bubble around the Philadelphia Phillies baseball stadium, which is where Lucy Liu planted the apple and this evil twisted tree started to grow. And he has her shrink it because we realized earlier in the film that as he shoots lightning, the lightning bounces off of the dome. And it, keep, it kept going a little bit, but as the dome was huge, it eventually dissipated. So he wants to shrink the dome. He's shooting off his electricity. He has the staff again. And the staff, he realizes, is like a battery. And he thinks he can overload the battery and destroy the tree, destroy the dragon, and win the day. Which ultimately he does. And you think at a great personal sacrifice wherein he dies. And he did die for a moment. They take his body to Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu and the other daughter's realm to bury him there. Don't know why they decided to do that because, you know, 
everybody, well, not everybody, but the, the kids and now the parents know. So wouldn't you want to bury him on earth so you can visit him? I guess there's also a whole ton of paperwork with how did your adopted son die? <clears throat> but anyway, that's not really an issue because Wonder Woman proper shows up and you find out that because she's a god, she has the power to kickstart life again in Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu's realm. Not only does she do that, but she's able to kickstart Shazam's heart. And he pops up out of the grave, shocked that he was buried and a little bit mad, but also happy, obviously, that he's alive. And uh, at this point, he shoots his shot with Wonder Woman. And she, as she's walking away, laughs and says, stick to saving the world, kid. So somehow everybody knows that Billy Batson is Shazam. Fine. And uh, this pays off on earlier, by the way, because everybody was so mad because there was a leak that she was going to be in it, which sucked. You shouldn't have leaked it. But then I didn't really pay attention to all the leaks. So I, I knew she was going to be in it. But then her first leak, you find that he's dreaming. Billy Batson is dreaming about being on a date with Wonder Woman. And he actually, when you finally see Wonder Woman's face in this scene, it's the face of the wizard Shazam on Wonder Woman's body. And he's talking to Billy in his dream to try to warn him about what's coming. And now we have Wonder Woman proper. Would have been a nice surprise to see her. I mean, that would have paid off more to have her actually show up properly at the end of the film like that. But it was leaked online because we just can't have nice things is what it comes down to. And that is the very, very super abridged version of my review of Shazam Fury of the Gods. I'm going to say it's probably... It's an eight out of ten. It's it's a perfectly fine superhero movie. It's a good it's good for your family and for you know if you have like I have nieces and a nephew, you want to if they're of the age where they want to see superheroes, but you know you can't necessarily like Suicide Squad is great, but it's a lot of obviously death and gore, and Batman v Superman a little bit too long and too dark and you know all these other things. It's just a good film. It's a good superhero movie. I enjoyed it, and it's something that you could put on with the kids and not really have to worry about like oh hey what are they going to be seeing here, you know? So that's my take. Uh, I would love to see a Shazam 3 just to see where it goes, to see if they can integrate them to the new DC universe. But who knows what's going to happen in a world that's driven by box office return and also uh, James Gunn just, you know, he rightfully so, he wants to start over and not necessarily have too much baggage from the old DC universe and all the issues that plague that. So as, as always, time will tell if we see anything again. I will say a couple of things that annoyed me in this film was it seemed like as Billy Batson, he was more mature and level-headed than when he was transformed into his Shazam form. That got a little bit annoying. He was a little bit too high-pitched and whiny as Shazam. I was okay with him in the first film because he was supposed to be 15 or 16 and getting these powers. Now in the film, they say he's a few months away from being 18. And obviously, I, I get it. There are immature 18-year-olds. But I don't know. I just... he uh, As Shazam, I feel like Zachary Levi played it up a little bit too much. Like he's still a little bit too dumb and too like just dumb teenager. But uh, especially considering he's the one who's trying so hard to keep everything together, you'd think he would have maybe grew up a little bit and he would want to train and this and that. But they're still very, because of, as their nickname implies, the Philly fiascos, they're not coordinated. They don't have any training. So yeah. But anyway, aside from that and a couple other little pet peeves, very enjoyable film, eight out of 10 for me. And now let's move on to the Super Mario Brothers movie. And I mean, honestly, I'm going to give the review the grade right up front just because Steve and Sal and Aaron are kind of surprised by it, I think. I'm going to say it's a 10 out of 10. It it really is. First of all, it's aimed at children. So, you know, let's bear that in mind. Like I said, I took uh, three of my nieces to see it. The youngest one was bouncing up in her seat, had her hands like ga- like verbally gasped at a couple of points and she's bouncing she's happy she's excited for princess peach she's excited for mario and luigi i was shocked because i just didn't think she had any sort of attachment to these characters at all but when i found out she wanted to go i was like yeah okay perfect let's go and then her two older sisters came they were a little bit less into it but the kindergartner with which is the target audience i want to say thoroughly enjoyed it and watching it with her i enjoyed it more because just go in there to enjoy the movie. First of all, thank God it's quick. It's an hour and something and it, it moves and it doesn't, it, it's not a two hour movie where there's a whole whole bunch of uh, fight scenes in between and this and that and these and those. There's nice little throwbacks and Easter eggs. They uh, they have the music from the original video game 
in there at certain points. You can listen if you listen closely. You hear the original before they either continue on to some different sort of music or they modernize it a little bit. So that was really cool for me. I'm not much of a video game guy, as I've said many times. So honestly, the last real um, video game system I played that I bought was probably Nintendo. I've had Playstations and Segas since then. But really, I played Nintendo when I was younger. And then I just didn't really... I occasionally played a video game since then. And actually, as I'm talking, I'm looking. I have a Nintendo Mini, one of those things that they released a couple years ago. And same thing. I would just play Super Mario on it. So... Yeah, it's a really cool movie. The, the voices, I was worrying about how the voices were going to translate. They do the super thick Italian accent for uh, a commercial that Mario and Luigi do for their plumbing business, and they really play it up. And they even comment, they're like, oh, are the accents too much? And they're like, no, 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 that's your thing. So uh, it's it was fine. The voices throughout the movie were fine. I never like listened to Chris Pratt and said, oh, my God, he's a terrible Mario. His voice is awful. No, it was from start to finish it was a fine movie it was a lot of fun don't go there don't go there with if you're in a mood just go there to have fun go there to have or maybe fuck it go there if you're in a mood but you know sit down take a deep breath enjoy the movie the graphics are great jack black is bowser is great there are a lot of cool callbacks and easter eggs and i caught some of them but i'm sure i missed most of it because like i said not the biggest video game person Next week sometime, I'm going to try to go with Sal and his daughter, and I'm sure Sal will have a much more comprehensive list of Easter eggs that I've missed. Actually, the casual nerd, Josh, he is taking his kids to see that as we speak, so or as I speak. So assuming that he can stay awake in the film, maybe he'll even have a a little list to contribute to this video. But yeah, so I realize now that this has been mostly a Shazam review and a very, very tiny Mario review. It's not, don't take that as a commentary on Mario or that I'm just blowing smoke up your ass. It really is. It's fun. It's enjoyable. I'm going to stick by the 10 out of 10 rating because, it, again, for what it is, it's aimed at children. The kid I saw it with, bouncing up and down in her seat, absolutely loved it, made me love it. But also I loved it just because sitting back and watching it without really any expectation, I didn't go in. If you go, it's like with anything else, go into it looking for something to hate. You are going to pick this movie apart, I'm sure. But I went there. I wanted my niece to have a good time and enjoy it. I was more worried that she wouldn't because, again, I had no idea what her relationship with these characters was. But as I've said a couple times already, bouncing up and down on her seat, verbally gasping or cheering at all the parts of the movie you want to. If you have a little kid, a niece, a nephew, a son, daughter, whatever in your life, take that little bastard, go load him up on popcorn and soda, enjoy the movie, and then do what I did and throw them all hyped up on sugar back in the door to their parents. That's a great way to end the night because you are the fun uncle. And now mom and dad have to go chase a hyped up redhead around the house until, well, probably the redhead just kept running around the house and the parents locked the door to the bedroom and hid in the closet. I don't know. That's my guess. But yeah, Shazam, 8 out of 10. Also a a very good family movie. I hope they continue the series. Super Mario Brothers, 10 out of 10. Really great. A lot of fun for the kids. A lot of fun for you if you go in there with the right mindset. I hope they make more of each movie. I hope they keep, for each of these movies, I hope they keep that thing about them. I hope Super Mario doesn't take itself too seriously and just keep having fun. You know, they've already beaten Bowser. I don't know. I know there's other video video game villains. Wario, I don't remember his origin story. I don't know his origin story. Maybe he shows up. That'd be cool. But again, keep, keep what made this one work. Keep it short, keep it sweet, keep it moving. You know, throw the little Easter eggs in for the adults and keep it and do that. Shazam, it stick, don't change. Don't suddenly, like I said, don't fry your suit to go black and get dark and broody. Mature a little bit. As, like I said, him as Shazam, he was a little bit too much of a child versus when he was actually a child, you know, but mature a little bit, but still keep that fun lightheartedness about you i think that'll set that sets it apart from the other superhero movies and does so in a good way it's not a negative to me it it was both of these movies are very enjoyable i'd see both of them again time and money permitting but i think shazam is already out of the theaters so we're going to go for a double helping of mario and see if maybe this review won't hold up maybe i'll write a comment booing this whole video we'll see as always i want to thank all of you for listening and watching along with me links down below 
join the nerd affiliated army visit the nerd affiliated store pick up some sweet sweet merch any support is greatly appreciated speaking of which please comment on this video let me know what you think let's talk about it and i will see you all in the next video steve play me out please